Hey everybody, John Fan, Church Without Walls International, CWOWI.org, and our EU website, CWOWI.eu. You know, I encourage you to sign up for my weekly thoughts. That's a weekly teaching that comes out Friday mornings, U.S. time. It's on a variety of different subjects, usually a couple of printed pages at a time in a series. And it's in those weekly thoughts that we put notices and registrations for our conferences, our Zoom online meetings. Uh, I also, in my weekly or in my monthly newsletter that comes out on the 20th of each month, email to your inbox. I put prophetic words, things like that, that the Lord has shown me or, or spoken to me about. So sign up for my weekly thoughts, cwowi.org. We are a house church network celebrating the gathering of the saints by meeting in homes, rotating homes and rotating who leads each week the way they did in the early church. All right. So today talking about spiritual transfers, and actually I'm talking about the greatest spiritual transfer of all time. You know, a few weeks ago I shared how the Lord imparted to us, how, you know, he spoke the worlds into existence. The heavens are the work of his fingers. His arm brought salvation. He spoke the world into existence. Genesis opens up, doesn't it, with God said, let there be light. And God May, said, let the earth bring forth every animal. Let the sea bring forth every animal. Uh, let the earth bring forth grass and, and trees and such like that. He spoke the universe into existence. But when it came to you and I, he did not speak us into existence. Genesis chapter 2 tells us that he breathed into the sculpted body of Adam and made him a living being. You see, God is a spirit, and the word in Greek and, and Hebrew uh, for spirit is also breath where we get pneumonia or pneumo or pneumatic. Uh, and, and so when it's indicating um, something very deep, uh, your one's own breath, it is the word for spirit. And so the Lord breathed into the sculpted body of Adam to cause him to be a living person. That breath of recreative or creative energy re, um, turned water and dirt and clay into human cells and blood. Uh, amazing, amazing power in that breath of God. But what it, what I shared with that, and, and just laying this, this foundation, is that he spoke the worlds into existence, but when he breathed into us, the difference is that he took part of himself to impart into us. In other words, if you talk of something, you've got to take your thoughts, you've got to take your emotions, your logic, and everything else, and you put those into containers called words. Those words are containers, and then you speak them out. So they become detached from you. You take your thoughts, you put them in words, and they become detached to you when you speak them out. However, when the Lord breathed into us, and in John chapter 20 and verse 22, it says he breathed into the disciples. The risen Lord breathed into the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. That's the born again experience. That is the recreation of the human spirit. When he didn't speak that into existence, he just said, receive the Holy Spirit and then he breathed on them. And when he did that, he's taking part of himself. It's not a separate act where he has to put words into, you know, thoughts into words as containers and then speak them out. But he imparted himself. God is a spirit and he imparted himself to them. Now, I shared, so, I shared that basics a few weeks ago, but now I want to break it down into something amazing. And that is the word holy. Now, do you know that the Apostle Paul never called uh, the people that he was writing to Christians? He called them saints. For instance, in, in, in Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, to all the saints in Jerusalem, in 1 Corinthians 14.33, he refers to all the, the churches of the saints. In Romans 1.7, we are called to be saints. Now, the word saint is the word holy. It's, it's it, the, the word holy or sacred in the Greek is H-A-G-O-S or H-A-G-I-O-S. And the word saint is H-A-G-I-O-I-S. In other words, it's, uh, it takes holy and it makes it a person. That's the difference. But the root is still holy. And so when you read the word saint, perhaps in your Bible, certainly the, the more basic King James and other Bibles, older texts use the word saint called to be saints in Romans 1 7 um, that is the word holy in other words he's saying called to be holy some things like the new international version and others will say called to be God's holy people but it doesn't convey exactly what 
what the older versions do. Called to be saints, called to be holy, called to be a holy people. And how does this happen? How does this transfer? And here's what I'm bringing to you, is that holiness is transferable from God to man. And that is an amazing thing. You see, even though Israel was called to be a holy people in Exodus 19, 6 and 7, become kings and priests to, to the Lord, they failed. And the Lord introduced the law to show them, the Mosaic law, to show them right and wrong, to show them uh, that they were sinners. And the law could not bring a person to holiness. God wanted to share his holiness with mankind. Holiness is, is the transparency, the honesty, the integrity, the purity of the things of God. And it's always been reserved for God. God alone has been holy. Whew. But think about it this way. In Luke 1.35, the angel Gabriel told Mary, the child which you will have shall be called holy. And then, uh, and then even uh, demons, let me see, I'm trying to remember where it is. It's in Mark, eh, I don't recall where it is, but demons said, you know, we know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. It's maybe like Mark 14.20 or something like that. And he said, we know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. And, and so we have Jesus being the baby who is holy and then his resur and then the resurrected Lord, that same baby who grew up to become the man, Jesus, at his resurrection, breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. See, Holy Spirit. So Jesus is called to be holy, will be called holy, Luke 135. And then in his resurrection, this holy child, Jesus, breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So you see, holiness was transferable, which is an amazing thing. And what that means is that you and I, it's, it, it puts aside every, th like hyper grace, you know, a uh, term coined and is common for those who are so far off on grace, they think they're not accountable. They think sins are not, don't have to be uh, repented of. They think that they're, you know, that everything is past. And, and but the fact is we are called to be holy. The Lord transferred his holiness to us. When he breathed into us, when our spirit man was recreated, he brought not only himself, not only the recreation, but he brought his holiness to our spirit. It's holiness, therefore, is not an external thing like the wearing of something on a woman's head or a man's head when they go to a service. It's not the length of a skirt. It's not, you know, not wearing makeup or the length of hair. Holiness was transferred from the holy child Jesus. In fact, Mark 4, oh, 24 through 31, Peter says the same thing when he's, he's praying and he says to the Father that stretch forth your hand and do miracles and wonders by the name of your holy child Jesus. That holiness that Gabriel said, that child Mary which was born of you will be called holy. And then he grew up and he died and he was resurrected and he and he breathed on the disciples, said, receive the Holy Spirit. He transferred holiness to us. What an amazing thing. It's an internal thing. It's not external. And so what that means is that is why the Apostle Paul doesn't refer us uh, to us as Christians. That is belonging to Christ. The word Christian meaning belonging to Christ or, or being of Christ. But rather he calls us saints. You know, in Romans 1, 7, in Romans 15, 26, he refers to the saints of Jerusalem. And like I said, Philippians 1, 1, he talks about the saints in Philippi. He always refers to us as saints. And the word saint is holy or holy one. This is an amazing thing that in, you know, how, how many times have you heard a teaching on holiness? Maybe never. And yet in each of Paul's letters, when he's talking to believers, to disciples, not just believers, but disciples, he calls them holy ones, holy ones. That's one of the greatest lessons of the New Testament, that the Lord transferred his holiness to our spirit, to us. Not that he breathed us and said, okay, be holy now. And he put his thoughts into words and words are the containers and they spoken into existence and it's a separate act. No, he took of himself and he breathed his holiness into us, recreating our spirit and making us holy from the inside out. The rest of our lives just becomes a matter of renewing our mind to think according to the, the, the grace of holiness and to command our bodies to obey uh, that, that, that which is godly and that which is right. All these things of love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and patience and meekness and kindness, all the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5, 
all the things of character of adding to our knowledge, uh, adding to our faith knowledge and moral excellence and self-control and consistency and godliness and brotherly love and agape love, all these things have to do with, with attributes of holiness because he didn't just speak us into existence. He breathed us into existence. He, we have never become separate from him. When he breathed into us, when Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, he is holy and therefore he, we receive the Holy Spirit. We, he transferred his holiness to us. Wow, what a powerful thing. So we are empowered. That's why grace is empowerment. It's not only favor, but it empowers us to live with the Lord and live in holiness. We are called to be saints, Roman 1, 7. We are called to be holy. And it's a, a journey to live it, to live it out. But know that you're already holy in your spirit. You're set apart for God's use. You're justified by faith and you have peace with God. Oh, an amazing thing. God bless. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Think about that, how the Lord transferred his holiness to you. And now you are a saint. You are a holy one. Amazing. God bless. Bye-bye.